He is the agent for Paxton Lynch, been a longtime NFL agent, founder of Steinberg Sports and Entertainment. Lee Steinberg joins us here on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN as the draft just two days away. Lee, how are you? I'm crazy. My caller number 12. <laughs> which uh, which NFL city would you like to see again? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good afternoon. Well, good afternoon to you. And uh, it was very interesting when uh, this process started and the Eagles were at 13. Your client, uh, Paxton Lynch's name, was mentioned quite a bit. At that moment, did you have any indication that they had interest in him? Absolutely, because they did both a trip to Memphis where they had Jeffrey Lurie, Howie Roseman, the coach, and on and a whole delegation, and he came and visited them in Philadelphia. So he had home-and-home visits, which generally is indicative of larger interest. So at that moment, they have 13. There is some interest there. When they then make the trade up to eight, did they re-contact your client and show more interest there? No, he was still in that process, and uh, they <laughs> they made a visit to campus. He made a visit to them. That's the most that they could uh, do in terms of scouting. At this time, you know, everybody's talking about Goff and Wentz, and they have been the same uh, back and forth as one and two. Do you feel that Lynch's name uh, deserves to be in that conversation for one of the top two picks in this draft for these two teams that obviously want quarterbacks? I do, but I think it's sort of a fait accompli that the Rams are going to take Jared Goff and the Eagles will take Carson Wentz. When you look at Pax and Lynch, you're looking at someone who probably has the highest upside of anyone in the draft. Um, the whole issue of getting ready to play, I don't think there is a quarterback who tries to make the adjustment in his first year that is ready to play. The offenses uh, are much more complex. The defenses are, too. The speed of the game is quicker. So <clears throat> Paxton had a backloaded process where April 6th he had pro scouting day and then uh, – in and around that took about 12 visits and I think people will love him he's um, six foot seven he can throw every kind of ball he's got amazing athleticism and fluidity for someone that size uh, faith-based uh, young man from a great family treasures loyalty good representative of the team so uh, we would have loved Philadelphia but if it's not to be it's not to be I'm really most anxious that he go to a franchise that's got strong ownership, great front office, and he has the best chance to succeed for the next 10 to 15 years. You know, I've had the very first pick in the first round eight times, been there, done that, um, and what you really care about is a long-term career, not a few minutes on draft night. Well, and with that in mind, Lee, so you've had the first-round pick before. Do you think, are things changing where the first-round QBs are going to sit more now instead of playing right away, or where do you think things sit right now? I think it depends on the franchise. One of the dangerous trends in pro football is the fact that they take a first-round quarterback, and because the cap necessitates playing him right away with so much money and not putting him behind a talented um, veteran who we can learn from, we push him into service right away. And in four games because of viral media, they're a judge to be a bust. And instead of the three or four years, which makes uh, more sense. So I think a, a, a team that urgently needs someone is going to be forced to push him into service. Probably the better uh, modality for a quarterback is to get a year to uh, soak up some information, get the mentoring of a older quarterback and, and, you know, it seemed to work for Aaron Rodgers. It worked for Carson Palmer. And um, we've seen first picks that have been successful, but we've also seen Jamarcus Russell and David Carr and uh, Tim Couch and a series of players who couldn't, uh, couldn't quite uh, establish a long-term career. Lee, so that leads into my next question. You called it viral media, social media. The, I, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, boy, Lori, Roseman, and Peterson sit down for dinner at a diner in Fargo, and 15 minutes later, 
that's out on Twitter. So from your side of the coin, how has social media or viral media changed your business? It means that there's no lo local news because anything, you know, given it a rotary speech and the tiniest little town can go on social media, it also means that the concept of privacy is gone with the ubiquitous nature of the cell phone and the fact that within instantaneously um, an athlete being somewhere, uh, owner being somewhere, um, you, it goes up on the net almost within a millisecond and then gets transported around the world, and in our case, the world of uh, football. Uh, Lee Steinberg's with us, of course. Uh, he's an agent. Uh, the, he is the agent for Paxton Lynch. I want to get your take then on this Sam Bradford thing. If you are representing Sam Bradford, are you watching this as an agent scratching your head? Is Are they going about this the right way? What is your take on how this is being handled right now between Bradford and his agent and the Eagles? I think the Eagles, uh, once they knew they were close enough, um, saw a chance to get a long-term franchise quarterback. But from Bradford's standpoint, the best way to get traded is not to ever publicly mention a word about it. Because the minute that a player, Colin Kaepernick, went through the same thing, tells the world that he's um, disaffected, then other teams will take advantage of the team with the incumbent player, and they won't offer anything. And in the case of Kaepernick, they just waited it out. So the best move there, I mean, you're sitting, he's got great representation. I'm not giving him advice on what to do, but um, if if you want to look at it this way, Philip Rivers got drafted in 2004 to replace Drew Brees. They had given up at the Chargers on Drew Brees. And instead of taking an attitude, Drew Brees went out, was comeback player of the year, uh, had a brilliant uh, two, three years. River sat on the bench, and uh, Brees went ahead and was a very hot free agent. So Bradford is the starting quarterback, and he will has the opportunity to be uh, have a splendid season or a splendid couple seasons. He's got $22 million guaranteed. Uh, again, he doesn't need my advice, but yeah. that's a situation where he can have a very productive couple of years and be hot as a firecracker on the free agent market. Well, uh, here's, I guess, my question for you as an agent. Okay, on March 1st when he signs that deal, do you as the agent say, Howie, is your plan – to try to move up are you guys trying to get a quarterback that would replace sam in other words my client's not going to sign here if you do what they just did back on march 1st is that a conversation you would have with ownership absolutely absolutely so when uh you're signing a player to multiple year contract one of the first things is how confident are you in the player as a starter so now Philadelphia says well we'll guarantee 22 million dollars that's confidence, action, not words. But then you further say, and do you have plans to go ahead and draft another quarterback? Something that that conversation I'm assuming happened, and I don't know what the substance of it was, but the reality is absolutely, you know, I sort of specialize in quarterbacks, and uh, the most uncomfortable thing is to <clears throat> have a second quarterback um who the fans uh, look at the first quarterback, he throws an interception in this, we want whoever, <laughs> we want whoever. Not that Philadelphia fans would do something oh, like no, that. Oh, no, they're right? very polite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they're very docile and low-key. Uh, they're known around the country for their, you know, extreme patience. But the point <laughs> is, <laughs> the point is that it it used to be that way with uh, everywhere Doug Flutie went and was the backup, then uh, and anywhere Tim Tico went and would be the backup. It's inevitable. The very first pick that the starter throws, it's, we want Tebow, we want Flutie. Um, I don't think that will happen so quickly with a young quarterback because – He's still in a learning process. It's actually better for him to sit behind Bradford um, and learn and um, and do it when your time comes. Remember that quarterbacks can play 10, 15. I had one Warren Moon who played for 23 years. So the short term is one thing. Um, but if I 
if you can use the breeze example, um, notwithstanding how shocked, angry, uh, whatever your client is, then you sit back and you take a second look and you say, well, no, wait a minute. Um, you are the starting quarterback. You have guaranteed money. Let's reel off a couple great years and then we'll see about it. Yeah, Lee Steinberg with us. So do you then, for to pick that up, do you think Bradford has a legitimate reason to be shocked, to be angry? It all depends on the question and answer you suggested earlier, which is it leading up to the negotiations, what representations were made, what questions were asked, what assurances did he get? And so without knowing that, it's very difficult to to analyze if if a player's in a situation he says are you are you likely to go up but i mean the obvious answer for a team is we never know what we'll do they always caution it that way <laughs> but if he was told um no we're going to go with our current group we may draft somebody in the lower round then obviously he's uh going to be uh upset uh lee steinberg and of course uh paxton lynch uh, let me ask you then any thought where the strongest feeling of where he could land so what happened is the deck reshuffled when philadelphia made that trade because if the two quarterbacks are off the board paxton's clearly the next quarterback and so you've got two categories one is teams like uh, the saints the bears the cardinals who have great existing quarterbacks but want to make sure even the cowboys that there's not a gap and they have someone ready to carry on the tradition. And the second set are teams that are more ready to play. Um, uh, need them right now, which would be like San Francisco or Cleveland. Um, you know, Denver is another team, Kansas City. My suspicion is he'll end up with a team that has a s- strong incumbent quarterback who's aging. And those are the teams to look for. Ali Steinberg here with some insight on the draft and the Bradford situation. Really good stuff, Lee. We do appreciate a couple moments of your time. Thanks so much. My pleasure. All right.